Hey everybody, Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Timberborn. Episode 7, Paper and Power. The first thing I want you, live viewers, to do is to vote on what I work on next. So unlike normal, uh, this poll is on Twitch, not on overlay. So typing 1, 2, or 3 won't work uh, because my overlay polling is not working right now. And um, to summarize sort of the choices here, uh, we have got well-being. So if we voted on well-being, I would likely invest in some medicine, medical beds, and a healer. Uh, so that injured weavers can be treated um, and therefore get back to work and be happier. Uh, if we vote on food, I would most likely add another farmhouse. And then maybe uh, even before adding another farmhouse, I am going to change the, um, the crop plots to be better adjusted. I did some playing off stream, not on this save, but... Uh, on a, a separate one uh, and to, to learn a little bit more about the game. So I want to implement those changes. Um, as far as production goes, if you vote production, I would almost certainly go for paper mill. Paper mill is a prerequisite of printing press, which is good for well-being, but also a prerequisite of um, dynamite. So the explosive factories require paper and then dynamite and dynamite allows you to do some basic terraforming. Um, one thing I haven't yet done in this game is the advanced form of terraforming where you have a dirt excavator and a terraforming station and terrain blocks. I haven't tried that yet. I've never gotten that far and it requires bots, which is uh, way above my current tech level and ability to produce those things. But with dynamite, uh, we can start doing some basic terraforming like deepening the aquifer or creating an alternative river uh, to irrigate more of the map. Uh, things like that that might be useful for us. And then for power, now that we have the smelter here, uh, one of the things that we could do is to use that smelter's metal to make an engine. Um, so an engine allows you to burn wood to produce horsepower, 400 horsepower, uh, which is probably a much more labor-friendly version of the power wheels. So instead of um, each power wheel, what, how much power does power wheels produce? Is 50. So you would take eight power wheels or one engine. So engines, uh, not fuel efficiency, but in terms of beaver, beaver efficiency, it's eight times more efficient because you have one person feeding wood into the engine instead. So that would be power. And then last but not least, other. Other would likely be science. Um, trying to get Num Cruncher, which would be a big save. Um, but Num Cruncher allows you to use mechanical power to produce science which is uh, very handy when you're trying to grind out the remainder of the tech tree. So, it looks like there is a tie between production and power. And I'll flip a coin. Uh, heads will be power and tails will be production. Uh, tails. I was like, wait, what did it land on? Yeah, tails. Uh, truth be told, I would probably have preferred power especially during a drought when I need to run on wheels, but whatever, that's okay. So speaking about um, production, we're going to want a paper mill. Uh, so we'll have to save up the, uh, the science for said paper mill. There's actually something else that I could do that would be beneficial for power. Um, so yeah, let me update. I'll work on both. Paper and power. How's that? Abixable and Wolfwing. Thank you for the resubs. So here is the thought I had. Um, it's not going to be nice to the mangrove trees, but I am going to cut these mangrove trees down as well as that one. And then also remove that plant. And the purpose is to put in another water wheel. And in fact, I'm going to make the original water wheel that we have a little bit more efficient by putting in a levee here. So what that levee will do is it will force the three wide units of water down to two wide units of water, producing more power for that water wheel. 
And I'm going to set up another water wheel uh, just in front of the one that we already have to do very much the same thing. All right. The other thing I wanted to do is to change the farmhouse a little bit uh, to use less space so that we can plant more stuff. And then I'll also change the crop makeup. Um, one thing I realized is that the amount of soybeans I have planted is completely unnecessary. The amount of soybeans that is required to, um, or, or sorry, uh, I mean canola. The amount of canola required to plant in order to make canola oil is far less than what I had queued up. So, uh, so yeah, cutting down, uh, removing a whole bunch of the extra canola that I planted and replacing it with like something like cassava would probably be more beneficial. And yeah, my mangrove trees are like super, super abused. Eventually, I do intend to plant mangrove trees out in the aquifer because that is um, an area that is largely going to be left alone. Um, but it's it's going to take me a minute to do. So, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a power path for a second water wheel. A large water wheel that will go here. And knowing that I'm going to want a second water wheel, let's get the gear workshop up and running. And then reduce the builders so that more people are, like, working in the facilities. Ink, thank you for the resub, too. So we got about a week left on the, um... On the drought in progress. I'm going to say they're going to focus on harvesting cassava. And these guys are going to focus on harvesting soybeans. And I might want to plant some additional soybeans as well. And um, tamp back on kohlrabi. So I'm going to do that too. So just changing the plant makeup so that there's a even amount of um, each type of, of food available for my uh, beavers to eat. That way we fulfill the nutritional demands more evenly, which I think is going to be ultimately useful. So once I have the extra power up and running, I will set up paper. Um, the reason I'm not going paper first is A, I don't have the science for it, and B, I really don't have the power for it. Uh, I would need a ton more beavers running on uh, power wheels, and I just don't have the labor for that at the moment. So um, that's why it's all paused. Yeah, Fang Face, the reason why I'm not un uh, unpausing the power wheels is I just don't. Uh, I'm, I already have four vacancies, work vacancies. So when pausing the power wheels would make not too much sense because uh, I'm already struggling on keeping workplaces staffed. So once we start to see the. Um, the canola, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll turn on the oil press and start pressing out canola so that we can ferment soybeans as a, uh, an alternative food source. And yeah, I feel bad about these mangrove trees. I've been abusing them, but this river is currently my source of power. Now it's possible that once I get, um, dynamite. I can have an alternative source. I can essentially build a beaver-made river um, that is intended to generate water wheel power. So, like, uh, imagine running water, like, down here and this way, or down here and that way, a long run of water, where it's, like, too wide and maybe too deep, which is a lot of dynamite, but too wide and too deep would allow me to run a lot of water through there. It would irrigate all the soil, and then um, I could have a bunch of uh, water wheels and cereal uh, to generate tons and tons of power.
Actually, probably measuring power in tons is wrong, but y you know what I mean. The other thing I, I could transition away from once I have constructors that are freed up is removing all of the blueberries, uh, or not all of them, but a lot of the blueberries uh, to make more room for other crops because we are sitting on a, a pretty high wealth of blueberries and I might as well just start planting other things. Okay, so now we have the elevated platform for the water wheel. And then we can put in the power shafts that will transfer the power. Actually, I probably don't want to put one there. That will transfer the power where it's needed. And then we can get the power wheel built. And that means that once um, this drought is over, the two power wheels that I have will probably be generating about a thousand horsepower or so, which will be quite a lot in order to make sure that uh, production is being met. You know, the, the horsepower requirements for production, rather, are being met. Alright, I think what I'll do is not destroy this because it's almost harvestable and harvest it and then um, and then trans uh, transfer over to a different crop type. So I'll allow this to be canola for now. Because this is already 90% grown, so I might as well harvest it first. Why not? All right, so the power shafts are all set. Uh, the other thing I'm going to want here is a levee in this spot. I could probably get rid of this deep water pump. I don't imagine that we're going to use it really uh, anymore because we have two deep water pumps in our aquifer. We don't really need a third here, and that frees up some um, some land space. Because I intend to put the uh, the paper mill uh, somewhere around here, and then also put the uh, the explosive factory somewhere around here as well. So far, so good. We have three free beds. So another thing to think about is to make sure that we get uh, some more barracks up and running. And uh, Louis and Runeloff, thank you for the resubs. <laughs> Cheers. That coffee is not very good today. I think it's the, uh, I don't know, whatever bag I bought most recently. Just not living up to the hype. Hype is the wrong word, but you guys know what I mean. It's not very good. All right, the levee is in. And then the purpose of the levee is, again, to narrow the river on purpose so that there is more water being driven through the wheel. And we can stick a large water wheel there. Boom. I'm not really sure why I removed that tree there. But yeah, double the water power is uh, is probably going to be a nice thing, I think, to have. All right, Lumberjack Flag, you can stop working because there really are no trees for you to cut. So why have you employed there? And in fact, these Lumberjack Flags can probably go bye-bye too.
All right, the canola is almost done, and that will allow us to start fermenting the soybeans because we're we're gonna end up with a lot of soybeans. Right now, we have like, yeah, we're gonna end up with a lot of soybeans in storage and just not have anything to do with them, which is not exactly ideal. Now, for this large water wheel, we just need planks, not logs. So I'm gonna stop the gear workshop, which will save the extra horsepower uh, to be able to drive the lumber mill faster. And I also closed down another power wheel. So we are we have 91% of the power we need or so in order to drive the lumber mill for the planks. The other thing I could do here is step power down like that. Um, it's probably not necessary, but there's nothing else to build here on top of this levee, I think. And we can step power down so that, um, I think anything connected to the oil press would, no, we don't even really need that. Let's get rid of it. So the fermenter no longer has cassava or fermentation. Got it. But we are starting to get canola. Perfect. So let's turn on the oil press and get ourselves some canola oil, which will uh, allow us to start fermenting soybeans. Bean curd. We've got four days left of the drought. Not too serious. Water levels are still pretty good, as you can see. The water levels in the um, mid and east section are, are lower than I want them to be because I didn't properly prepare for this drought. But they're not they're not uh, like emergency levels or anything like that. So what will we need for the paper mill? We will need 15 gears. So as soon as the planks have been supplied to this large water wheel, I will turn back the gear factory or workshop and start to get the gears for the paper mill. Okay, does look like the canola is ready to go. So I'm gonna tell the soybean focused farmhouse to focus instead on canola so we can pull up all the canola out of the ground and then repurpose the area for non-canola for probably cassava and soy So there's that plot. So all the canola that I want is just going to be this, like, seven plots here. I think that will honestly be enough. And if it's not, I can always readjust the, um, the plots that we have. But that's all the canola harvest that we needed. So we'll have this farmhouse go back to soy. So we have one focusing on cassava, one focusing on soy. Which means that, yeah, it would be ideal if we had a third farmhouse at some point. Once we have the population to support it, focusing on kohlrabi. Uh, so that the three cash crops that we're using in order to feed us are well supplied. The other thing I was thinking is a lot of the berry bushes down here just I don't I don't believe we'll need all of them. So I'm going to mark some of these berry bushes for destruction so we can plant maybe more kohlrabi or more cassava. I'm not sure which. But plant uh, a wider variety of crops in this section. Even I'll get rid of that much. This plot of berries alone should be plenty in order to uh, supply the, the berries we need to run uh, the growth fats. Now that we now that we're not like entirely reliant upon eating kohlrabi and berries, and there's a far wider variety of food, uh, there will be less dependence upon um, upon berries for beavers to subsist, and therefore I can definitely ramp down the amount of berry bushes that I have. I just don't need as many as that I was running. All 
All right, the planks are up to five eighths ish, ish, almost. We do have a nice uh, vat of um, canola already, so let's turn on the soybean fermenter, and that means sadly one fewer researchers. Once water is running in uh, two point seven days, we will definitely be able to get research ramped back up. We just can't at the moment um, due to the fact that the... Uh... Hmm, that's odd. I wonder why this forester can't reach out here. But yeah, we can't just because we have so many power wheels to run on. It's okay. Improvements to be made, right? So what I was doing here is I was deleting some of these oak trees in order to replace it with a road uh, in hopes that this forester could reach this plot here, which should be sowable, but just wasn't being sown. So I'll keep an eye on that. So we're starting to get fermented soybeans. Uh, so that's the first batch of fermented soybeans that we've had. We have mangrove fruits. We have berries. We don't, at the moment, have a supply of kohlrabi or um, cassavas. Just because I think everyone's eating them so quickly. Which is like a good thing, right? You know? They're going exactly where they need to go. Into the bellies of beavers. One thing that I don't have at the moment, though, is... Um, medical beds? So, maybe at some point, voting for well-being would be a smart play. Uh, that can be largely left up to you guys. But, uh, but just know that I, I do have a bunch of injured beavers now that are um, leaving vacancies in the labor pool. That didn't help. Hmm. Okay, how about this? and rust decided to take the day off nice well i i'll see you later in the heretic slaying i suppose <laughs> right. the other idea that i had is put a stairwell here and uh maybe that will shortcut so that means that it will be fewer planks for this large water wheel but hopefully we'll get more trees planted and cheers All right, that worked. Now the forester has free access to all of this. Perfect. So we are only 10 planks away from having double water wheels, and I think this is, will provide a ton of power. Or a ton of horsepower. The Lido water levels are too low to support uh, lounging. So I'm going to fill it up a little bit so that the beavers can uh, wet their fur and have some fun. And we're only a day away from the end of the drought and uh, we didn't even lose one level of water in the, in the reservoir. So pretty, pretty good. So it seems to me like the beavers are eating cassava like crazy. They're flying off the shelves. So I'm going to have my farmers plant some extra cassava, uh, hoping to um, outpace demand, if that's even possible. And the constructors are now removing the older berry bushes so they can replace it with cassava. Which is 
a more efficient food source anyway. As you, uh, as you go up the, let's call it, tech tree, you end up with more efficient food sources. Fermented cassava and fermented soybeans are far more land use efficient than uh, berries are. Berries are easy, but they don't feed a large number of, of beavers very well. Lenny Lemur, thank you for the resub too. Oh, oh, the, the wheel's done. Sweet. Oh, that's really nice. So now um, let's remove the priority of focus on power and build a paper mill. And we are going to get uh, water running in 0.2 days. So I'm going to lower the mid and east floodgates down to 0.5 so water can flow. And then I may game it so that we get uh, running water sooner than later. Uh, and then during the night, raise the floodgates to go back up to standing water level levels. Uh, and the purpose of that is so that we can uh, we can make sure the water wheels are producing the power we need. So yeah, I was right. About a thousand horsepower or so. And I also, uh, one thing I just did just now is getting rid of the... Uh, hamster wheels that we had because with two water wheels i think before next drought and maybe i'm cursing myself but i think before next drought what we'll end up having is enough um science actually i already have enough science to unlock engines so that's a that's a very smart way to invest i think So it's not currently flowing because it's just waiting to fill back up. But it will be in a minute. Come on, waterfall. Go faster. So this small warehouse of fermented cassava are going to get moved to here. And I'll put another one there and there. So this here is going to be for paper. And this will also be for fermented cassava. I think you can tell where I'm going to put the paper mill. And cheers. So the paper mill requires gears. God, why isn't the water flowing? What the hell? Come on, water level, go. There it goes. And now it's nighttime and no work's being done. Okay, I'm gonna raise the water level up again. Oh, wow, we already have all the gears we need. I'll keep making gears because likely paper doesn't serve a purpose until you also have explosives. Zinlin, thank you for the bits. So, question for you guys. Uh, should I add explosives or engine? That's what we're going to work on next. So the poll's on Twitch, and uh, and feel free to vote. So the advantage of engine is it will allow us to avoid having to run on hamster wheels during droughts, and the advantage of explosives, also paired with dynamite, is it allows us to start channeling water, uh, to, to blast, to move, you know, to blast the soil out of the way and, and to start uh, creating our own waterways. So you guys vote. And just as I expected, yeah, these power wheels are producing about a thousand-ish horsepower. It varies a little bit, but about a thousand. And that's just from the advantages of adding levees to channel the water into narrower passages 
and then uh, adding another wheel. Very nice. Look at our food variety now. We should be, I would expect, hitting a new level of well-being soon. Um, what's probably holding us back is injuries, I, I, I'd guess. But um, we have uh, we have a wider, a much wider food variety of five different food types. And then let's see. Campfire and rooftop terrace not looking so good. So we'll, I think that's just because of a lack of like free time at night. So we'll keep an eye on that to make sure that that's being fulfilled. That would be my only other concern is to make sure that that is um, that those requirements are being met. I'm also going to toss in an extra barracks because I think that uh, we only have two free beds. We're going to want that extra barracks sooner than later. And then I'm also going to move the shrub that we had there. This is not like a min-maxed or even remotely efficient design. Uh, just throwing it out there. Just sort of building ad hoc as needed, which is messy and inefficient. But we still have enough free space that I'm not overly worried. So you guys have voted engine. Okay. Uh, so we'll get the paper mill up. Actually, the paper mill's already up. So build an engine. If we go to power... I'll unlock engine, and in one side, the path side, um, what goes in there is wood, and what comes out is power. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to keep it simple. I'll stick it right here. So a beaver will go up the stairs and fill it with wood. And then out on the other side is a power shaft. So what I'll do is I'll step the power down like this. And then the engine will be connected to the smelter, which is through this um, power, these power shafts connected to everything else. So during droughts, the engine will run, and then during uh, non-droughts, or during good water, uh, the water wheels will power up everything. That way we're not burning uh, engine fuel constantly. Saving ourselves some... Saving the trees. All right, yet another pole, putting it up there. And I'm gonna put this one up for 10 minutes because the engine's gonna take a while. And this is, uh, this pole is what to work on next, which is well-being, which would be like medicine, food, making sure that we have uh, a better, a more stable food variety, like more, another farmhouse and maybe some extra soil, um, utilizing this space over here possibly. Uh, we also have production. So production would be, for explosives and dynamite uh power so the other thing that we could do with power is adding gravity batteries gravity batteries allows you to store power when you're not using it and then to um use the stored power when you need it gravity batteries work really well for engines because during the night the engines can run filling up the gravity battery and then during the day the gravity battery can feed the grid the excess mechanical power needed to run things so gravity batteries and engines really pair, go hand in hand. 
Not to say that we need them immediately. Or other. And uh, other might be working on like num crunchers. Um, because if I have an engine and also water wheels, I can have the engine run and the water wheels run, offering up enough power for a num cruncher, which would unlock more science more quickly. If that's something that you want. So you guys can decide. So this here needs gears. We do have our gear workshop going at 100%. Needs logs. It needs metal blocks. And we have the smelter going at 100%. So sooner or later that will be well supplied. Food looks great. Water looks great. Tonight I'm going to have to remember to raise the floodgates to make sure that... Uh... Okay, here we go. Floodgates up to 2.5. Kazukage, uh, it's going pretty well today. Every day is a good day. What are my builders even working on? I, I seem to have a bunch of builders, and I'm not even really sure what they're doing. What have they been doing? And Happy New Year to you, too. All right, so now we're at a 2.5 water depth for the floodgates, readying ourselves for the next drought. And everything is well-supplied and well-powered. I love it. Now, did we fulfill... Yeah, Campfire Rooftop Terrace was far more fulfilled than the last time I checked. Lido, not so much. We might need another Lido uh, if we're working on well-being. We'll see. Okay, I am going to pause the oil press uh, because the canola oil small tank is completely full. So there's really no reason to keep running that press. It's... um. Making canola is very, very efficient. You don't need a lot of canola seeds to make canola oil. So now we have a quite a lot of canola oil. I can keep that paused for a while. We have 42 of it. Soon I'm going to have to pause the paper mill um, because we'll be at paper capacity-ish. Not quite yet, but soon. There's no point in having that running. So what is the builders actually working on? You know what? I'm going to employ one more builder and then, like, follow them. So, yeah, they are bringing stuff to the engine. Okay. I felt like one of those things, like, because I wasn't watching them, they weren't working. But, no, I was wrong. They're working, just in mysterious ways. <laughs> So, Manning, you asked uh, my ideas for dynamite. Um, there's a few different things I could do for dynamite. One is I could create another river off of this waterfall um, in order to irrigate this soil back here, making this arable land if I would want. Uh, another thing that I could do is use the dynamite to deepen the aquifer so that the total volume of water that is stored in this aquifer is greater. Uh, I could also use the dynamite to create power channels. So one of the uses for dynamite, and I'm just going to use the pathing tool, is to channel out um, grooves in your in your towns uh, where it's like one or two depth. You can even have water in there, but the idea is that you put your um, mechanical power shafts in that channel uh, to sort of hide them. Because right now, I built this as needed, but my, like industrial heart of this beaver town is like messy and inefficient of land use space because I have so much more land it might not be super necessary immediately to set up power channels that's more like a mid to late game type of thing but that, that's something I could do with the dynamite as well but um but how I use the dynamite initially will be up to you. And another thing I could do with the dynamite is to set up uh, spots for gravity batteries. So that gravity batteries can store the most potential power. Uh, because sheer cliff faces is ideal for gravity batteries. So there's a whole bunch of things that I could do. 
All right, this bad boy is almost done. We just need like three more gears, one more metal block. Kaboom. And then, and then the, I'm going to call it wiring, but the power shafts assembly. You know, I just realized is I can start adding the mangrove trees back. I'm not really sure putting mangrove in that spot's all that useful. It's also like leveling out the river would be nice, right? So that the river, like this spot, could be train accessible by adding dynamite here to make it lower so it's on the same level as the mangrove back there. More food for thought. Thank you for tuning in to Timberborn, which originally streamed live on Twitch January 2nd. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, a link can be found in the description of this video or at Rodamont.com. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow beavers.